Where the Danube meets the Black Sea, there existed for centuries two countries named Moldavia and Wallachia, or collectively the Romanian principalities. In 1859 they united and the new state was born, Romania. Moldavia and Wallachia were located on the borders of three empires, the Ottoman Empire, the Austrian Empire and the Russian Empire. The special position on the Eastern Europe map was a place where many political intersected and thus important historical events took place on this part of the world in which sometimes distant peoples and countries were involved. One such event was the Etheria movement, one of the main events of the Greek Revolution of 1821. After the conquest of the Byzantine Empire by the Turks in 1453, the Greek elite adapted to the new reality, acquiring important position in the Ottoman capital, creating prosperous commercial enterprises and maintaining a tight grip over the Orthodox Patriarchate of Constantinople. As the Romanian principalities were part of the Ottoman Commonwealth, the Greek diaspora also settled in these small countries which could still enjoy a certain degree of autonomy and where Christian faith could be practiced in all freedom. From the beginning of the 18th century, certain Greek families even managed to sit on the thrones of Moldavia and Wallachia. They came to be known as the Fanariot rulers, after the name of their neighborhood in Constantinople. The old generations of the Greek elite dreamed of liberating the former Byzantine capital and reviving the empire. Their greatest hopes lay with the Tsar of Russia, the Orthodox emperor who planned to conquer the Ottoman capital on the shore of the Bosporus the legendary place where Europe met Asia. The younger Greek elite, inspired by the ideals of the French Revolution, preferred to fight for the establishment of a nation-state on the territory of ancient Greece. The whole Europe, built on the foundation of the classical Greek culture, supported the cause of an ancient Greece reborn. Preparation for such a plan could not be made in broad daylight. This is why a secret organization called Filiki Eteria, the Society of Friends, was established in 1814 in the port city of Odessa, in Tsarist Russia, with the express goal of liberating Greece from the Turkish rule. Prince Alexander Ypsilanti was elected as its leader. Ypsilanti was born in Constantinople in 1795, where his father and grandfather were high dignitaries of the Ottoman Empire and then rulers of the Romanian principalities. In 1795, his father, Prince Konstantin Ypsilanti, took refuge in Russia, fearing his Turkish masters. Here, young Alexander received an aristocratic education and served in the cavalry regiments of the Imperial Guard. During Napoleon's invasion in 1812, he fought in the Russian army, showing great courage. Together with his Hussar regiment, he took part in the Battle of Dresden, where he lost his right arm torn apart by shrapnel. In 1820, Prince Ypsilanti was an aide to Tsar Alexander, and from this position he gave the signal for the revolution, leaving the impression that the action would be supported by the Russian Empire. On February 22, 1821, Ypsilanti crossed the Russian border and arrived in Yash, the capital of Moldavia. On February 27, the consecration ceremony of the revolution flag was held in the courtyard of the three Hierarchs Monastery in Yash. The Metropolitan of Moldavia handed Alexander the commander's sword together with his blessings. Ypsilanti planned to march on Wallachia and then cross the Danube into the Ottoman territory and farther on into Greece with his army of volunteers, which had at its core the sacred battalion formed by his closest followers. The revolution was to begin on March 25th, the day of the Annunciation in the Orthodox calendar. But the Tsar denied his support for the revolution and the Greek Patriarch of Constantinople excommunicated its leader. The revolt soon collapsed. Alexander Ypsilanti's sword is part of the permanent exhibition of the Moldavia's History Museum in Yash. It is one of those objects that encapsulates an entire story in all its greatness. The weapon is a Shamshir saber with a curved, wavy blade. The blade is decorated using damascening technique, by which drawings in gold wire were inlaid into the steel surface. One can notice a complicated monogram similar to the Sultan's Tugra, which is a highly decorative calligraphic seal or signature, as well as a six-pointed star known as the Seal of Solomon. It is likely that Ypsilanti acquired this oriental weapon during the Russian army's Persian campaign. The sword has a plain steel sheath decorated with the brass trimmings.
Good night.